In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we remember at this Mass Sandra Roberson, and today we also celebrate the feast day of St. Casimir from the 1400s, uh, who was a king and ruler of Poland. He lived a very short life, but was known in particular for his piety. Uh, so we uh, pray for all those with responsibility for uh, leadership in our civil governments. Um, so we pray for them, uh, not only to make good and wise decisions as Casimir did, but also for personal holiness. Um, also, you'll notice that we've decided to eliminate about seven of the Stations of the Cross. We've decided 14's too many. We decided just to cut back to seven. So maybe we'll find seven more before time goes on. So um, now for those that are at home, you don't get to see the stations yet. No stations for you, not yet. Maybe later, maybe later you'll get to see stations, but right now no stations for you. So, but for those who are here, you can see partway, we're, we're, we're halfway through and uh, look forward to then seeing the remainder of the stations also uh, installed later today. So we look forward to Friday, uh, the, the opportunity to pray the stations uh, as we have the mosaics that fit within the pattern of, of the decorations we have in the sanctuary, as well as the stations we have in the body of the church. Okay, maybe some of you I don't think noticed because you're all looking around like you didn't see them. So there they are. Well, they're there. So there they are. So, um, so let us begin as we celebrate these sacred mysteries. First calling to mind our sins, we turn to the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, to serve you is to reign. Grant that with the help of St. Casimir's intercession, we may constantly serve you in holiness and justice. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste of salt and empty worth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In a year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torturous than all else is the human heart beyond remedy, who can understand it? I, the Lord, alone probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song. Blessed are they who also hope in the Lord. Blessed are they. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. 
Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen, and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would, who would greatly have eaten, who would have gladly eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off, and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime. Well, Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Before we get to the parable, we have the first reading from Jeremiah and then Psalm 1, and they give us some guidance about what we should do and what we should not do. Um, the uh, Jeremiah reminds us that cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, so to trust in human power. He says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. So there's one of the things we should definitely do is put our trust in the Lord, not our trust in, um, in human strength. The cursed man then seeks strength in the flesh, and his heart turns away from the Lord. And that's one of the, the perils, then, for, uh, for this man, for the worldly man, is focusing on human strength. He's not focusing on the, the power of God, so his heart is turned away from God, turned away from the Lord. Whereas the man who trusts in the Lord, his hope is in the Lord. So he's not only trusting, but also, we'd say, he has fixed his hope. Um, he is intent upon the Lord. And, um, and so this is an important thing. We can apply this in just, just a moment to the parable that we have in the gospel. And the psalm, we can say, adds to this because we are told that the man uh, is blessed who does not do certain things. So he does not follow the counsel of the wicked. He doesn't walk in the way of sinners or sit in the company of the insolent. So following or listening or walking or sitting, he is not associating himself with those who are wicked. But what does he do? And the psalm tells us this. He delights in the law of the Lord. So we can say that his, he's taken this in. Not only is his heart turned toward the Lord, as Jeremiah said, but we can say his mind is occupied with the Lord. So he's, he thinks of the Lord. He meditates on his law day and night. 
So he's really consumed by directing himself toward the Lord. Um, the wicked do not do so, the, uh, the first psalm says. So then let us apply this to this rich man in this parable of Lazarus. So here is the rich man who has all of these fine things, and what does he do? We can say that he's really trusted in human strength, so he has everything he needs. So why does he need to pay attention to the Lord? We can say his heart was far from the Lord. He did not turn to the Lord, but rather he was confident in his own strength and the blessings that he had. Had he paused to, to meditate on the law of the Lord, then he would have uh, then uh, thought about what the prophets and what Moses constantly urged people to do, is that with the possessions that they have, to recognize that we are only stewards of the things that we have that we should be mindful of the needs of those who are around us. Had he listened to that, or thought about that, or meditated on that, he might have behaved differently. But this is maybe the danger of uh, the person for whom everything is easy, or for whom all things go well. I think one of the great dangers here is that he just can become lax. Uh, he can become lazy. He can become overly confident in himself. And that, in fact, is actually quite dangerous quite dangerous for this man because it's not as though he actually did anything affirmatively or positively that was harmful. It was really more his omission. It was what he didn't do that was the cause of his punishment. He just simply wasn't aware. His, he just wasn't paying attention to the needs of the poor, even the poor man that was lying at the very door of his own house. Um, had his heart or he had his mind turned toward the Lord with greater care, then in fact things might have been quite different. I wonder at times if it's not good that we experience a certain amount of adversity, because it does tend to disrupt whatever confidence we might have in ourselves. Adversity does have the effect of pushing us toward the Lord, especially when there are circumstances that are beyond our control, we realize we really need the Lord. And that's a blessed thing. That is a good thing to, to turn our heart to the Lord, to meditate on the law of the Lord, to recognize that we need the Lord, to have faith in the Lord. Um, during this Lenten season, this is a great time for us to grow in these virtues. And things would have been quite different for this rich man had that been the case. Um, so let us, in fact, uh, take to heart uh, this counsel that we have today learn from this lesson, and fix ourselves on the Lord so we might learn uh, not to think in our ways or to trust in human strength, but to listen to the Lord's ways and to think with the mind of Christ, to love with the heart of Christ, so as to grow closer to our Savior, Jesus Christ. We stand now to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, that we might be more detached from worldly things so as to put our full faith and confidence in our Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord. We pray for civic leaders, especially through the intercession of St. Casimir, that they might make wise decisions and themselves model personal holiness and integrity. We pray to the Lord. We pray that we might be more sensitive to the needs of those who are least among us, and that we might recognize we are merely stewards of the gifts that we have, being generous with those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sick and the suffering, and for a special blessing for all of those who care for them and who help them to uh, be returned to full health. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Roberson family for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for the protection of our religious freedoms, our freedom of conscience, and the freedoms of the Church. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls.
Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares it may inwardly bring about, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Casimir, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O oh God, remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Abide with your servants, O Lord, who implore the help of your grace, that they may receive from you the support and guidance of your protection. Through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.